Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Kim here. And this is um, one of my episodes of Thelma Made Me Do It. I, um, I was just going to come down and have a little bit of a play by myself here. But, you know, this stretchy fabric um, that was left over from one of the garments that Thelma left behind, it, it just kept weighing on my head as to what I could do with it. And so, so far, I, I did it off screen, but so far I, I just cut out uh, a piece of the sleeve. And because this is stretchy material and um, I'm not really concerned how I'm going to sew it because, you know, stretch knits are a little harder to sew. Um, I thought I would just have a play with the material and see what I came up with. So I had printed a sheet of these images. These are Theta Barra and they're black and white, uh, sort of black and white images. Um, one of my favorite film stars of the silent film era. Um, beautiful lady and um, very much ahead of her time. Um, so I just thought I would kind of play in black and white uh, and, and see what happens. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing at this point, but I figured ah, I'll just turn on the camera and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I'll just delete it. So, so what I did is I, I cut a piece of fabric um, to, to fit a piece of book page. And all I did is I took a book page and just ripped it in half and that's what I'm using. And I've, I've glued it down with glue stick just to kind of hold it in place. It's very easy to come off. Um, but this is a heavy duty, they call it super glue. Um, I know you can get this at the um, dollar store. Uh, I'm sure there's something comparable in, in other countries or, or at other locations, but it's just a little bit more of a hold compared to the regular glue sticks. And I have a piece of this wedding dress. I think this was a wedding dress I got last summer. Um, I bought at the thrift shop. And I'm, I'm just taking it apart. Um, this was part of the... Um, back uh, of the uh, top back of, of the dress and I hadn't taken it completely apart so I was just gonna cut off a couple pieces and and see if this works maybe I'll just cut off this piece here and see if I like this first and do one and then just kind of take it from there and see what happens so I'm not cutting off the rough edges but I am gonna cut it so it's not oh there's a lining here too yeah I'll take the lining off but I'm not gonna cut it uh, uh, perfectly straight but I, I just don't want that big pointed piece in there so I'll just open this up I'm just using a blade um, I do have a stitch ripper here but for me I, I like this method too and it's fast um, if you are using a blade of course you do have to be careful you're you know it's just some common sense that if you're not careful, you're going to get cut. And um, that's my disclaimer for you. Don't use a blade unless you know how. And I'm just loosely pulling the threads. Now, I'm not going to be worried about the threads. And I know some of you are cringing at my method of doing this, but I've done this for so many years. I think I've only bled on white fabric maybe once or twice. Um... But I'm just pulling the threads off here, or splitting it open. And I'm not even, today I'm not even concerned of the threads that are left over, or the fact that it's not ironed. It's just a backdrop. And so, I think I'll use the shiny one for now, just to see how I like it. The only thing I don't like is that pointy piece there, so I'm just going to snip that off. Just so it's not so intense pointed. But I, I want these to be shabby. These are the um, pieces I make um, that I call my shabby uh, journal toppers, but you know sometimes they turn into tags as well. Um, there's no real uh, rhyme or reason to it. Um, I kind of like that look so far, and um, I'm just going to build on it a little bit. Um, I think I'll use some lace, some, some white lace. Just give me one second. I know I said before I don't even like white lace. I, I don't. Um, but I have a piece here of this. This came out of one of my thrifty bags. So I'm just going to cut a piece of white lace. I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing yet. Kind of like that. 
so you can see there's no measuring I'm just chopping things up kind of framing the uh, piece a little bit I'm gonna take that off and I might stick it down there and I'll do a couple more little bits And now I think we just need a little piece, right? So all I'm doing now is I'm going to walk this over to my sewing machine very carefully. I might pin it down actually before I leave, but I won't bother to do that on camera. Um, and then I'm going to do a couple of rows of what I call shabby stitching or ugly stitching where I don't care if I use zigzag. I don't care if the threads show. The whole idea is to just get it put down in place and um, so I'm going to go do that and then I'm going to come back and I'll show you um, how it looks at that point so I'm going to stop the camera for now I'll be right back and I'm back again um, so I, I did some sewing on that one piece and I will show it to you in a second maybe you can already see it I don't know you might be able to see a little bit of it. <laughs> um, but I came back to this uh, piece of this wedding dress and I took the lining off of it already. There is still some uh, stitching in here where there's the dart and part of the zipper. The rest of the zipper is gone, but I will salvage. And, and I know you think I'm crazy, but I, I do salvage the zipper too. I will use it in, in um, the construction of the shabby things that I'm going to make today. Um, and then there's this lining still on the back side of this piece uh, of the the um, satin wedding dress. And, and then there's also these little appliques that are on here and some, uh, I forget what they call this. It's not tulle. It's, there's another name for this stuff, but it's a gathered lace of, of sorts. There is a special name for it. I just can't think what it is right now. So I will continue to take all of this apart. And like I said, I'm not worried about this shabbiness of these um, ends and the threads that are sticking out, uh, nor am I worried about the, the uh, black fabric that I'm using, because these are just bases. And that's why I tell you to, to not be in a hurry to throw things out, because sometimes you just need a good base. And... I do a combination of these shabby stitches that I'm going to show you right away, as well as good quality stitching, definitely. Um, but these are my favorite to make because it just shows you how easy, and you saw this, how easy it was for me to glue a piece of fabric down to the paper. And you can see all my crazy stitching on the back here. I just... Uh, I, in fact, I didn't even pin it. So there's a couple of little um, puckers in here. Um, I didn't do anything like that. I just started at one corner and I just start to go around and around and around catching anything that was lifting. And so this becomes a base um, to then further decorate. So I'm going to just show you. I grabbed a couple of things, but I will grab more uh, after I stop the camera and come back. Um, but this becomes the base to do any decorating. And the fact that it's black and white just says, I can add purple, I can add red, I can add more black, um, I can add gold, silver. So I only went and grabbed a few things. And so I'm just going to show you what some possibilities are. And then when I've got a few more made, I will, I will show you how I actually do them. But I, I brought down this roll of ribbon, and this has got kind of this cluster of stones in it, and it's very sheer with gold. It's a wired edge ribbon, so when I cut off a piece, I would, I would pull the wires out so that it's not sharp. Um, but I just thought, again, because it's black and white, like, look at that. If you just stitch or glue that down, what a difference it makes to this, this piece. Um, I have this ribbon here. And this has got kind, it's a, a gold uh, trim with uh, burgundy in the background. So I thought even that would make such a nice little trim on there. Okay. And I had this bag of these, I call them mean and nasty, but, but they're actually not bad. Um, th these are leaves that come on a roll. You can pick these up at the dollar store. I'm sure you've seen them. Maybe you've used them. But just taking a little snippet. No, this has still got tape on it here. 
I'm just going to take a little snippet of this and add it over top of that uh, piece of gold trim. Like what a difference that makes, right? I can then take a second piece and add it up here. Um, you know, there's a little bit of a, a stem there that I would just snip off so it doesn't look unfinished. Um, but just between that and that, and what a difference uh, I, I've created just using this shabby stuff that people would throw away um, to create a fun piece of art. I can further embellish this with uh, braided trims, with flowers, with uh, beads, sequins, um, all kinds of trims. I can add, go back to the traditional thing and say, a label, a flower, bird, a butterfly. Um, but for, for these things, I kind of want to work in the in the fibers and the textiles. So I will continue to build on these uh, as I go along with that type of product. You know, maybe some handmade flowers, some beadwork. But it's just that simple um, to take one piece and just add on these other things. So I'm going to again show you how I started. And that was to, where's my original piece of black that I cut? Oh, here we go. I just took a piece of this fabric. This is the sleeve. Again, I'm not worried about threads, but if there was like an orange thread sitting on here, of course I would remove it. Um, here, I'm gonna turn it this way so it's a little bit straighter of a piece. And I've just got a piece of book page. And the only reason I'm using book page is because this is so stretchy. And when the needle goes through, you know, sometimes it catches on knits. Um, so I'm using this as a base to stitch onto. So taking my glue stick, I'm just going to run some glue back and forth really quite a bit as, as much as um, feels sticky and, and um, that I can position this on the fabric. So I'm just paste, putting it face down where the glue is, uh, sort of centered in the fabric that I've got here. And I'm going to trim this away. Now, no measuring, no uh, double checking, not necessary. So now for this piece here, I'm going to use a piece of that lining that I already took off. Um, so it's not quite as shiny as the satin trim, but you can see I've got threads hanging here. I don't care. The only thing I don't like is these two little pointy pieces that are sticking up. So I'll take that off. And I will just lay that on top. Find one of my images buried in the pile here. What did I do with the ones I cut? Oh, here we go. There she is. Isn't she gorgeous? So you can see how the threads are sticking out. Um, and then I had that piece of lace. And I'm, I won't have enough of this to do the whole nine of uh, the images. I didn't even really cut the white out because I'm putting white over top. And I'm going to be putting other things over top. So you won't even see that I haven't even cut it out nice. And just laying a piece of lace all the way around to frame the piece. And I probably could get away with just one cut in half here. Yet. So I've cut that in half. I'm just going to lay that on top and go back and do the same thing. So again, I'm gonna just, um, you can pin it, you could baste it if you wanted to baste it. Um, I don't worry about those things, I just go with the machine. I'll start in the bottom uh, right corner and just tack it down once around with the um, a straight stitch or a, a wide zigzag. And then I will just continue to go round and round and round and round until it's all secure. So again, I will um, do that and I'm gonna do the rest of the nine so that I have them all done for you to see and then we will start decorating them. I'll be right back. And I'm back. So now I'm just gonna show you the um, different pieces that I made. So this one has some of that tool or, or ruffle that was on the wedding dress. I'm hoping I'm recording. Yes, it looks like I am. Um, I hope so. Um, so there's a little bit of tool here. And then the same kind of lace trim. Same kind of stitching on the back. Although this piece has a little bit of extra hanging down here. Oh, only because I didn't go right to the end. That's why. Um, so there's another one there. 
another piece of that ruffled trim that was on the on the uh, dress and then these were the appliques that were on the dress they were pretty rough shaped by the time i took all the threads out of them so i just uh, power stitched over this like shabby stitched uh, on top of it just to um, hold it down and when you're doing this you don't see all the flaws in the material and I love the thread sticking out and you know the little bits and pieces like I said I don't like to work with black that much but when I'm using it as a base it's it's uh, fine uh, just to give a little bit of contrast and here's this girl here more of that wide lace that, that I was cutting off of and that one you can see all these I'm on camera because I just paused it. This is the first time I've ever been able to pause and start. So I might have to redo this whole thing. Now this one has a little bit of lace that's gone too far onto the face. So I'm just going to take my scissors and trim it away. And so you can see it really doesn't matter. And there's a couple of tears in here. But this is all going to get covered up when we do the embellishing. And then there's that one there. Now this one also has a couple pieces of those appliques. I used up everything I had in the appliques. So I made nine pieces, the whole sheet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But I still have a couple pieces of the wedding dress, the lining. I still have lots of this black stretchy fabric. And here's the um, satin from the lining so there's opportunity to make a lot more and conveniently I did print another sheet of these um, so I will continue off camera until they're all done but I thought I would decorate a couple with you while I still have you and I have my glue gun um, I'll just pull this over everything's a mess on my table just the way I like it I think just the what you're used to I will clear off my desk after I shut off the camera. I'm grabbing a couple of glue sticks. I don't have to wait. But I don't spend a whole lot of time thinking about these things. Um, when I'm doing them, I just let it happen. Don't sit there and, and, and think about it too much. Otherwise, you don't get half the work done. So I just, uh, you know, like I had grabbed one of these plain ones, which I'll do now. And I'm just going to cut a piece of this this uh, ribbon trim that I had shown you. Hope you can see that. And I'm I'm not cutting very much of it. And I can either put glue on the fabric or glue on the ribbon, which I'm just going to run the glue really. I've got the hot glue gun on. It's always on on my desk. And I need another glue stick. I think. Why are you not working? There we go. Just a little bit stuck. No, not working again. Why? It's not grabbing my glue for some reason. Okay, we'll try that. I may have to stop the camera again and go and fix my glue gun. Just give me a second. I'm going to pause this again. Okay, fixed up my glue gun. So then I showed you this um, uh, leaf pattern that I have here. Um, I'm going to put some on, but I'm not going to put it directly on here. I'm going to put it a little bit above, but I'm going to cut off that little stem piece first that was sticking up there. So it looks a little bit more finished and about like that. Glue on my fingers now. I had to push out quite a bit of glue on my glue pad in order to get to finally start working again. So now it's stuck to my fingers. Okay, so I'm just going to add that there, but I'm just going to put a few dots on the leaves. Oh, my glue stick went flying out the door here. <laughs> I'm not having luck with this stick today. Now, you don't have to hot glue them on, but um, I like using the hot glue gun because it's fast. 
any um, pieces that are strings or glue stick, uh, you know, threads that are sticking out, I will hot um, take a hot hair dryer and just um, blow the hair dryer over top to get rid of any uh, strings from the glue gun. And now up at the top here, I want a little bit of leaf there as well. Nothing too much. Maybe we'll just cut off three here. Leave a little bit of stem. And just to tie in this burgundy, I'm going to cut off another little piece of it. Um, nothing much. And I'm going to glue that down there. So you can see how just a tiny little bit of this burgundy brings out the color again in the piece. Oh, this glue gun is making me crazy today. Okay, and I'll put a little bit of that color there. And just add a little bit of this leaf. And I can decorate this even further with, you know, a little bit of bling and some maybe some uh, beads or whatever but I don't normally go this far um, in my my uh, finishing until I know what project I'm going to use it for because it's black and white so I can I can change the color based on what I'm working with and and so this could have uh, a purple accents or green um, it, you know I can just uh, change up the color uh, easily just by by switching out uh, with something else but that gives you an idea of finishing one. So let's do another one here. This one's got quite a bit of the white embellishment on here from the, the lace appliques that were on the, um, on the wedding dress. So I'm just going to leave it like that, except I did have, I cut off a couple pieces of those roses from that um, pair of pants that I got from Thelma. And so I'm just going to cut out this uh, black applique out of here. I know I shouldn't have rushed ahead and grabbed it, but I had no choice. I just wanted to do something with this. So now I'm going to lay that on top. And you can see how it brings out the color even more and the contrast even more. So I'm just going to put a few dots of glue on this to hold it in place. I may come back and uh, put some um, sequins or something on top just in case the glue marks do show through or some type of bling on top. I will play with that yet. And I also have those same leaves in silver. I don't know if this will work or not. Oh yeah, that's kind of nice, isn't it? Still has the original tape on here. These came from the dollar store and, you know, they're they're just a little cheapy ribbon thing, but it's amazing how nicely they can look um, when you apply it with other stuff. Now I'm not sure I want to cover that whole... Um, now I'm overthinking, aren't I? Just do it. I'm not going to cover the whole thing. I'm just going to follow these leaves, I think. Okay. There we go. I like that. I'm not used to doing this kind of stuff on camera, so you have to be um, bear with me on this. This is not my my methods um, to work. I like to um, show you and tell you what I'm going to do, and then I go do it and come back. This way, you know Murphy's law: what can go wrong will go wrong. Like my glue stick going flying on the floor. All right, a little bit of glue applied there. And so this is going to lend itself to some little um, trinket or 
bead or button that I would want to finish that in the end. But really nothing much added onto this now and I will leave it like this until I have a chance to find a button uh, to put in there or something to put in there in silver. Um, so that's kind of done. I also have this, um, it's a little too late now to use it, but I have this um, black sequins that I could have added onto the to there as well but that's just to give you an idea of of different ways to decorate them so now I have her she's got a little bit of the the uh, applique in the corners here uh, but she kind of lends herself to the to the reds as well I do have some of this ribbon um, that really would make a statement right there, wouldn't it? Um, but I like what's going on in her hair. So she's got a little bit of this, it, like it's a little serpent, but it's it looks like it's um, very meshy. So I almost want a little piece of that black lace. Where did I put it? Here we go. And maybe I could just take a little couple of little pieces of this. And add into the corner here that I like that and I wouldn't mind using a piece of this although I think it might be a little too thick thick looking and that's even worse isn't it okay what if I'm gonna cut it right there take that away a little bit going this way so that the netting is on the inside and it just flows into that red and just putting a little bit of glue now you can embellish these with you know uh, paper embellishments or labels or birds or butterflies or flowers anything like that that you have um that seems a little harsh there so i'm just going to take it a little bit there and i'm really liking how these gold leaves bring out the color so i'm going to just add another gold leaf in here I like that. And I'm just giving you a few examples right now of how I would do this, but I will further embellish this uh, off camera. Um, the ones that I've done so far. And then I will show them to you next on my next video. So you can see that this doesn't take a lot of time. It's just picking out a few things to, to work with. Now she's got glue strands on her face. I, I Again, I will um, take the hair dryer and get rid of those. I will embellish this further with some jewels and some, some buttons and sequins and all kinds of things to fill it in. And then you're not even going to notice how this started out as a shabby piece. And the whole idea is to show you that I used junky lining fabric in the background. I used that black stretchy uh, material that, you know, I probably wouldn't normally sew, sew with this, this knit. And, you know, just with a few pieces of lace and trim and embellishments, and you've got a really cute piece. Um, again, I would not normally... See, I always say again, sorry. Um, I, I would not normally dress them up to this extent. Um, but the colors are still pretty neutral, and I will um, uh, leave most of them, uh, the decorating for, for later, or I will do them in colors that, of stuff that I know I'm going to use. Um, some of these will also go for sale in my, in my shop, and, but I will show you the finished products uh, in my next video. 
um, because I'm going to continue off camera to work on the rest of these and do another batch of nine. So um, I will show you these in the next video and uh, then put them up for sale or some of them up for sale after that in my shop. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, Thelma, this is one of the first of the Thelma Made Me Do It. And uh, it's only going to get more uh, crazy and fun and more stuff yet uh, from all that stuff you gave me. So stay tuned. Um, I, I um, hope you're enjoying this series so far. And don't forget, Tuesday is our Techniques Tuesday. So there'll be lots of crazy fun stuff going on in that that video I have made some notes and did some samples and I'm excited to get that that uh, video going um, so other than that I wish you all a very creative day and a creative week and I will talk to you all soon bye for now